You are now listening to the NYYST Podcast. Welcome back. This is episode 182 of the NYYST Podcast. I'm your host, Christian. And as always, joined by my co-host, Chris. You. And it's that guy, Ryan. What up? I'm back, baby. What's going What's going on, I fellas? missed you guys last week, man. No, you, no, yeah, you didn't miss you. Too, I did. I did. It was really upsetting for me to not be here for that show. You know, we covered for you. We made it seem like you you needed a day off. And, and you know, hey, we're back, on, we're back on video. For now, and it was just really that you were you just ditched us. You basically came on and said, uh, "I'm not coming. I'm not coming on the show. You and Ryan handle it." And I got rave reviews from a lot of people that said that uh, it shows better without you. Uh, you bring the mood down. Ryan is super in the number two spot. Yeah, I thrive uh, in that you, number two spot. For all of yeah. our YouTube watchers who uh, who are wondering why Christian has to be so close to the computer screen. Uh-huh. Uh, with age, your eyesight declines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so he can't, he's not able to see the screen unless he's so close. He looks like you can literally see down your throat. Cool. Uh, first of all, you're the idiot with glasses. Okay. Four eyes, you jerk off. Okay. I don't go. have glasses. Nice. So you want me to, you want me to bully you for that? I'll bully you for wearing glasses. I don't really care. I don't give a shit. Oh God. I know you don't care. Christian, you asked me to get a stat last week's episode about uh, how many uh, extra inning games the Yankees played last season. They had 11 extra inning games. One was 14 innings, two were 12 innings, three 11 innings, and five 10 inning games. So out of the 11. Really yeah. really warrants having to stick a runner at second base for uh, extra innings. It does? It, that was sarcasm. Uh, I, I can't pick, couldn't pick <laughs> it up there. I, was, I wasn't paying attention enough. But uh, yeah, they and that that was that was higher than the league average because back in 2018, I think it was the league average was 4.9 extra innings, uh, extra inning games per team, 4.9. Yeah, over that 162. Was a couple of years. So yeah, divide that, was, that by three. That's what one extra inning game. Yeah, so maybe two. At that point, let's end it in a tie. But just to so finish up that, I point. think. I think uh, um, you should leave Ryan a five star. You should leave the show a five star rating and review. Please, we've for, actually got a good, for, decent amount of reviews the last couple of weeks. Cool. Thank you, no thank one, you to everyone. No one care. No one cares about what you have to say. I was doing. I was doing something, and I was going to make it funny, and you ruined it. Mm. That's why the show was better without you last week because you're a ruiner. Without you. Yeah. You know, and people, I got, I got numerous tweets and text and in Zoom calls and everything else. People saying, "Oh, you know, when Chris is on the show, he he kind of pushes Ryan to the side. He doesn't let Ryan talk." It was good to hear from Stack Guy Ryan. It's good. Opinions. I'll leave. I'll leave the show. I'll do my own thing. I'll do. Uh, I'll do like a daily type show. That's fine. And I'll produce Triggered. this one. Triggered. Oh, we need you, bro. We have a lot of baseball to talk about today. I don't think we should be fucking around, okay? Because we got baseball back, baby. And today, yeah, last night was the first time I just got really pumped up. Like, it really hit me. Did you did you contact the fine people at Blue Chew? No, we're doing... Like, right, you want to talk about your idea real quick? Yeah, I just figured maybe if we want to, like, do some sort of pitch to them and as some sort of idea it would be, you know... Let's. I'm gonna pop a blue chew and watch highlights of Tyler Wade and see what happens. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. For anyone wondering, blue chew. I, it's self-explanatory. Okay, it really is. So, you don't have to go. That's into my details pitch about it. Blue chew. I'm gonna take your your product live to, on the podcast. It's gonna be a whole funny segment, and I'm gonna watch my favorite player do what he does best. Watch me. Yeah, watch but, Tyler Wade. <laughs> Are you, are you going to get the physician's consultation? Yeah, I'd probably have to talk. I actually think it should start there. We should record that. Yeah, that, all right. So we'll, we'll make it a whole, like, a little documentary. I mean, I'll, Ven, I've, I'll Venmo you the five bucks for shipping. All right, great. I'll hold you to that. And I'll pay your copay. Perfect. For the There's doctor. no copay. It's, it's free. Uh, no copay? No, I paid a copay the other day. It's not free anymore. Uh, you don't know the people I know. Oh, you got connects. 
I got connections. I know doctors. All right. Well, I, I know people that know people. Yeah. So that's the plan. So let's start. Let's start off with the big news of the week. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's really important that we start the show with this. That Sylvester Stallone says that he's got a director's cut of Rocky Four. What has this guy been doing for the past thirty years? He's got a director's cut. Hey, you from know Rocky it takes Ford? a long time to edit these movies. You know, I, I got a lot of <laughs> things on my plate. <laughs> How many guys it take to edit a movie? You know, <laughs> that would be cool. Though. I'd watch so that. So there's never been there's never been a director's cut for Rocky Four. I feel like that's odd. Did he direct Rocky Four? He directed, yes. See, the only ones he didn't direct, the, the original Rockies, was the first and the fifth one. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. What's the one that's, I love Rocky Balboa. Yeah. Rocky that's Balboa. the sixth one. That's such a good movie. That's a good one. That one and, <clears throat> Ro- and the first Rocky were my favorites, I think. Anyway. Can we get to baseball? Yeah, no, I just wanted Ryan to do an impression real quick because yeah, no I way. really, I think Ryan should be in Greg Giannotti's spot. I think he should be doing the morning show with Boomer. I agree, yeah. actually. I have to listen to his impressions more, but I think I'm I'm a slightly better. Uh, the go- uh-huh. the garbage. There's two uh-huh. types of impressionists. Uh-huh. 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 There's uh-huh. one who ones who actually sound like the people, and then there's ones who exaggerate the impression. Mm-hmm. He's an exaggerator. Yeah, I'm I'm better at that. Uh, he's a garbage. Uh-huh. He's garbage. Uh-huh. Tough with a dippy in now. So today's uh, July second. Uh, yeah, Major League Baseball. Return to some sense of normalcy. Uh, yesterday, on July first, uh, players had to report to camp, um, summer camp. It's a cute little thing they're calling it. Oh, we're at hmm. summer camp until you get sick. Uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, let's start the show. Remember that one time that we ripped Peter Gammons for saying something dumb, and I don't remember what it was. And then we said he was probably an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah he, which said, the, the, which, he said. He said. He said Cole was going to be uh, a Yankee, and then three days passed and nothing happened. Which was uncalled for. He shouldn't have called him an alcoholic, but that's neither here nor there. But the guy got okay. pulled over with a bunch of weed and a gun in his car. So, Okay, that's not being an alcoholic, which is a completely different set of circumstances. So let's just move on from that. Uh, yeah. His former uh, co-worker, Buster Olney, is the biggest loser. I hate Buster uh, Olney. Uh, who I've uh, listened, who I've heard speak at all this week, uh, because he was asked uh, the percentages of finishing the season this year. Do you know what he said? Twenty percent. No, he said zero. Zero. He said there's a zero percent chance the season will finish this year. So then the the person asked him, "What is the percent that the season actually starts this year?" And you know what he said? Zero. zero. Five. He said there's a five percent chance the season actually starts this year. Okay. As much so as Buster I Buster Olney, uh go fuck yourself. Listen, as much as I hate him and as much as I wanna oh, hate as much as I wanna hate what he said, I'm gonna give him credit for having some balls. For oh, having balls for to say zero zero percent. Now I'm giving him credit for being a pessimistic douchebag, okay? That's is, what I'm giving him credit for. Is he the because only we all, is he the only credible person saying this? Is he credible? He, I'd say he's pretty credible. What about a doctor? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> a doctor, go fuck yourself. Uh, look, I'm not naive to the fact that we're in a global pandemic, or the fact that coronavirus can, uh, especially that the major league teams are traveling, and it can cycle through an entire team, an entire locker room, and, and really actually taking a uh, shit on the entire season. I'm not naive to that, but I'm also choosing to remain positive that we've gotten this far teams are in camp now we're three weeks so we're recording thursday night so if you believe the rumors in three weeks the yankees will be in our nation's capital playing the washington nationals it'll be garrett cole baby versus max scherzer that's gonna be uh, okay a great I'm, I'm gonna choose to remain positive that somehow, some way, if I got to cross my fingers and my toes, that we're going to get this season going and wrapped up. That's how I'm going to choose to to live my life at, at this moment. But I'm not naive to the fact that 
of what's going on out there. I'm not naive mm-hmm. to the fact that the virus and everything that goes along with it, and it probably will be hard to keep everybody healthy. But don't be a scumbag and come on TV and or radio and say, "Oh, there's a zero percent chance that the season is going to finish." Because nobody wants to hear that shit. Don't be a fucking asshole, Buster. What kind of fucking name is Buster anyway? Well, on the other side, I, did you guys did you guys hear what what Hal Steinbrenner had to say? Yeah, Hal said there's going to be fans in the stands he this said, year. He said maybe quote. 20 or 30 percent, but he did say it. Said I he do expect that we'll- I do expect to see fans in our stadium at some point to some degree, and that's going to be a great day. Those conversations have hey. happened with the governor, and 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 they're they're looking at uh, getting people back at the stadium. Wow. And, and you know what? If the tickets are affordable, I'm going. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, I give a shit. I don't want to come off as as, some, as one of these uh, COVID conspiracy guys that think it's fake or whatever. I I wear my mask if that's the if that's how I got to get into Yankee Stadium this year. I'll wear my, my mask. Oh yeah, look, I'm I'm someone who has done my homework on everything, but I'm also someone who's gonna do. You know, you want me to wear a mask? I'll fucking wear a mask. I'm not that person who's gonna be like, no, my freedom. Whatever. You want to fucking tell me to wear a mask, I'll wear it. I don't care. I want to watch baseball. But I'll say this. The the likelihood of someone... Think of, think of it like this way. The likelihood of someone getting this virus, the age of these players, and dying from it is is the same likelihood of getting struck by lightning. And what yeah, do you... You're, and you hold on, hold on, hold on, the, uh, hold on. What do you do? What do you do to prevent the risk of getting struck by lightning? If there's a thunderstorm and shit, you, you delay things. the game. Same thing if someone if if this starts to circulate, you quarantine the people who start to get it, and you and you make sure they get healthy. I mean, that's it. It's literally the same likelihood. So as serious as right, it is, but the likelihood of getting dying. it, the likelihood of getting it is, is much greater. Oh yeah, and that's what once you get it, you're done. You're on the IL. Yeah, what and you're it, you're off the you roster. You know what? It, you know, what if some some uh, derelict up in Boston is uh, who do? Uh, what if Carlos Correa is a super spreader? He would be. He, he really would be. would be. He's probably patient zero. Actually, you think so? He could be. He's that much of a are scumbag. You, are we, are we going to get angry letters about this now that we call Carlos Correa a super spreader? I, I think we're safe with our with our fan base. What our what our target audience here? Um, but what ha- have they talked about the? covid il if it's a set amount of days because they don't want to give out the names i mean we're gonna we're gonna react to some audio from brian cashman uh i don't know when you want to get to that yeah i mean we can it's up to you but did you did you get the clip of when he said what he said about the covid i believe it's in there i believe but i'm not positive it was more geared towards way to do your job producer way to do your job Bang up job, producer. More geared towards the you're, players. You're the Al Dukes of this podcast. Yeah, I I take I take that as a compliment actually, because I, he's a genius. Do you want to get to the cash anyway, clip? Well, let's let's go over this. Uh, is if you don't know it's in there, then how am I going to react to it? That's what I'm saying. If well, you want to just if get it's not the in point. there, then yeah. If if it's not in there, then we can circle back to it and you can tell us what he said. All right. Okay. All right. So here's Cashman. He did a little press, uh, a little conference call, and he talked about it's really geared towards the the adjusting to having like a spring training but at home without the same amount of resources and, and what it does for the players. It certainly wasn't our first choice despite loving New York and loving the facility. Obviously, you know, have the practice fields and – and the multiple bullpen uh, situations. So our stadium ops personnel has utilized every aspect of the blueprint of Yankee Stadium, and that's not just your fields of play. A visiting clubhouse, you'll have an auxiliary clubhouse. you have a home house. We'll be utilizing the concourses, two bullpens, obviously, in the visiting side, two bullpens in the uh, home side. You have batting cages and tunnels underneath. We are dealing with and discussing all of those things. And so conditioning aspect of this stuff is going to be uh, paramount for Aaron Hicks, for Aaron Judge, uh, uh, to be determining that ultimately in the end because we want these players to, to, to withstand a 60-game sprint over a 66-game schedule. We're in it to win it, and uh, I think everybody else you know, uh, should be feeling the same way, and especially in a uh, shortened season. That means I think uh, it heightens the ability for anybody uh, to really take a shot at the title, it's certainly going to open it up for for a lot of opportunities. 
opportunities for, for teams to take advantage of. And obviously, you know, whether it's a full season, a short season, you know, our mission statement's the same. We want to win. And um, and that's what we're looking forward to trying to do, and that's the challenge to hand. No, I mean, I worry to win it, and uh, we got a blueprint of the day. And, uh, you know, we're going to go out there and win it. So just to add to that, I'll, I pulled up the Brian Hoke tweet. Uh, that says, according to Cashman, teams will not be able to disclose if players are placed on the COVID-19 IL. It would be left to the media and fans to guess why the player is not available. All right. So, yeah, that's that's what he had said, which what are you going to do in that situation? Let's say, let's say a player comes down with COVID, right? What do you say? Yeah, like, I mean, let's say let's say God forbid James Paxton got coronavirus, right? Right. He's supposed to start. Let's say, let's say the season's underway. Let's say tomorrow night James Paxton is supposed to start. All of a sudden, you, you turn on the game, and you know Chad Green is opening the game. What happened to you know James Paxton? Here's the only way to get around There's, that: you you just can't disclose any type of injury all season. Whether it's COVID, whether I mean, you you be smart enough if you see someone start to you know they tweak their leg or something when when they're running down to first base or tweak a hammy, you know it's a hammy. But if a guy just leaves the game or doesn't show up the next day, you don't say any injury at all. You just say we had to place him on the IL. We can't go into into detail to the public though. But like to privately, like Major League Baseball would know why that person is on the yeah. IL. As long as they know, then I'm all right with that. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't. I guess that that would be a way to do it is that you don't disclose any injuries. But how are you going to say, like, let's say Hicks pulls a hamstring, which is likely. he's out, right? He's out, and then Paxton is missing a start. Oh, no! Uh, what do you do? Uh, he's he's out for he he's out for two weeks. What's wrong with him? He he's out for two weeks. Don't worry about it. Figure <laughs> Everybody's going to know. Well, that's the don't that's fuck. that's what I was asking you. Do they have set days because? Is the is the, you know how there's the you know fifteen day or whatever. What is it yeah, now? Yeah, I thought that there was a different COVID. I thought I had read somewhere that there was a different COVID IL, but I guess not because, like, let's say the COVID IL is a different length exactly. than the regular IL. Like how then somebody's gonna be like, oh, he had it. Look, he came off after whatever days. Right. He obviously had it. Right. It says uh, so that that'll be a separate IL for players who test positive, and there is no maximum or minimum number of days for this injured list. Okay. So then you can't even disclose but then how you many can't days. Disclose it, though. Yeah. So you, what's the point of it? You can't disclose how many days anyone's going to be on the IL for any reason. You just got to say they're on the IL. Yeah. So why is there a separate COVID IL if you can't? If you're not look, and I'm a firm believer that it's a medical thing, and it's a you know, if the player doesn't want it out there, it shouldn't be out there. There's HIPAA laws in this country to protect people's medical privacy, and I I'm firmly behind them. So if the player doesn't want it out there, it shouldn't be out there. But how are you going to hide it? That's I, the whole thing. I kind of disagree. And why is there a separate? And why is it? What do you disagree about? Because what, if I go to you the- like if you had a disease. If you had a disease and your boss and you didn't want anybody to know and your boss went out there and said, yeah, Chris has got this. Uh, if I go to the doctor with a pulled hamstring, that doctor still cannot tell anyone that I was there with a the pulled hamstring. It's the same law. All right, yeah, here's here's why. It's because their last collective bargaining agreement, it states that for any medical condition not related to employment, a club may disclose only the fact that a medical condition is preventing the player from rendering services to the club and the anticipated length of the player's absence from the club. So if it's non-baseball related, then they do not have to disclose it according to the collective bargaining agreement. You know, you know what he just became again? That guy, right? That guy, right? Oh, Doc, Dr. Rye. Doctor yeah, Doctor Rye. Doctor, yeah, Doctor Stack Guy Rye. So no, I don't. I'm totally in agreement that if the player doesn't want it out there, it shouldn't be out there. But how are you going to hide it? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough. Like I said, and why you just is there can't separate, disclose anything. And why is there a separate aisle? What, is there? Do you get a? You get a bonus? They lock you in a cage. A I I guess it's because they're lumping COVID in with any sort of medical uh, problem that a player might be going through, and and the fact is that maybe they wouldn't want that information out there, so they just keep it separate as like a medical IL, non related to baseball. So can I ask a quick question? When Tyler Wade had poopy butt, Wait. right? That's not baseball related. 
Why did that? Why did it come out that he had the flu? Because they disclosed it. Because you have you can disclose it if you want to, but you aren't forced to, as you are with I'm sure a he, baseball related injury. He, I'm pretty sure we got the information from Tyler Wade. Yeah, he 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 He's was like, yeah, I had I had I had to run to the bathroom. I don't know. Look, I, I don't care. If the guy wants to come out and say it, then I don't have a problem with it. But if for whatever reason they want the privacy, respect it. You should respect that. But the, again, why? How are we going to hide that? Yeah, and I agree because oh. th- it's there's such a stigma around. I mean, that's all we've all been talking about for how many months? I don't know if I'd want the world to know that I had COVID, you know, when I'm a famous baseball player, you know? I mean, there's plenty of famous people that have come out and said they had it. So I don't think there's really – I mean, I don't think there's a stigma attached to it. But there's some people that just want that type of – that part of their life yeah. hidden. Yeah. And I don't blame them. But again, like James Paxton's like, I don't want anybody to know I have it, right? And then what are we – I mean, what are we supposed to say? Like if you're Michael K and he, you come on the game and you get a – somebody shoots up, oh, uh, you know – Paxton's not starting tonight. Well, you can tell me why. No, I'm, I'm not. We sh- you're gonna you're gonna know. We can you're turn it into a segment. Had, wh- why? COVID or not? <laughs> and we one. and we can put together I mean, the puzzle piece. I mean, you're gonna know why if somebody's being vague about why a guy's not playing. If everybody, if ten guys get hurt and you know all ten of their injuries, but the eleventh guy has COVID, and they're like, yeah, don't <laughs> worry about it. You're gonna know what it is. Let's not hope hey we guys, have 11 don't worry injuries. About why James 11 injuries let's, let's in 60 not worry games. About why James, let's not worry about why James Paxton's not pitching tonight. Don't worry about it. And why why he's not allowed to go home to his wife either. <laughs> that's we, but that's what I'm saying. Him. You're not going to have worry be worrying about anyone because oh. you're not going to know anything about any injury this year. You're just not. You're only going to rely on Boone or Cashman saying, you know, we're hopeful it's something minor and whatever. That's going to be it. That's the only way to get around it. I don't think I don't think so it's really I, a matter Cash- of getting around. It's just because that was in their collective bargaining agreement. So they're just following what let let like take Carlos Carrasco for example. I was thinking about him, man. He's a player that you know he was diagnosed with cancer. That's 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 more along the lines I think of what this agreement was for was for us a, a truly i mean this is serious too but you know something that you might want to keep out of the public sure. just to to have some privacy and this get gets lumped into that because it's a medical right. condition and if he didn't want anybody to, to know about it nobody should know about it right right so yeah i mean but who cares and i believe what i don't know was there a player on the rays that had uh had cancer He's not playing this year. I want to say he was on the Rays. I can't remember his name, but for the longest time, nobody knew why he wasn't going to play this year. And then he came out and said it because the team couldn't disclose that information without his consent. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was the Rays, but I think it might have been Daniel Robertson from the Rays. No, uh, no, 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 no. You know who it was? I'm sorry. The Orioles. It was Trey Mancini. He had something wrong. It was right. Trey yeah, Mancini yeah, yeah. had some something I forget what it was that he, he's uh, he's afflicted with, but they just said, "Oh, Trey Mancini is missing uh, the season due to medical," and nobody knew what it was. And a few weeks later, he decided he was going to come out and tell everybody. Yeah, but I can't remember stage, what it is it was now. Stage three colon cancer, but he uh, he, yes, he I, made a statement yes, in April saying he fully expects to he, he expects to make a full recovery. So yeah, and I do wish that he makes a full recovery because he is he's, he's well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he if he wasn't a good ball player, but he is a right. good ball player. So. He, you know, you hope he gets back on the field. Yeah, it says he's likely not to play in 2020, but wish all the best, Trey. Uh, I heard Cashman mention uh, Aaron Judge in that clip. Uh, Judge was uh, taking some hacks off of Garrett Cole today, so how'd that uh, go for him? Judge, uh, the the clip the Yankees. This is how the, this is how much the Yankees uh, care about Aaron Judge now. The clip that they tweeted was him swinging and missing. Oh. That's good though, because I think the fan base is more hopeful and positive towards Cole than they are for Aaron Judge at this point. But uh, that rib injury of uh, Aaron's uh, didn't seem like it made him miss any time in the weight room. The guys is looking. Uh, what do the kids say? Swole. What is it? Swell. Swole. Swole. 
No, I think it's swole. It's swole. swole. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I watched a few clips. I. It's just it pumped me up to see them back on the field and and doing shit. If Buster only's right, I I might just. I might just break my television or something. Like I might just lose it. Because I, I you can't bring it back again and then and then take it away. They gotta be pretty sure that they're gonna get through this season for them to be doing this. I mean, they're gonna take every precaution possible. I mean, you're probably gonna see that uh once the season starts when there's nobody in there and uh all up and down the the uh, left and right field lines are just baseball players six feet apart from each other. Mm. Um, what else? You think this summer camp shit's gonna uh, gonna affect them? You think a lot of guys are gonna come back slower than normal, with without ample time and and the same type of the same type of spring training that they're used to, especially pitchers. I mean, you know how how know. fragile pitchers are with with getting their shit back together. Uh, there was a tweet. Uh, Matt Blake said that he had Cole on the gun at ninety nine today, so it doesn't look like he's uh, being slowed down by this. Yeah, so you know, so you know what this means. This means that these guys were at least a guy like Cole was working this whole time, and and they're ready to go. I mean, the pitchers are ready to go. I got it. You you know who you know if Garrett Cole comes out dominates. You know, leads the Yankees to a World Series. You know who? You know who deserves to get a ring? Who? Amy oh. Cole, out there, preggers, yeah, playing catch with her husband, yeah, keeping that true. arm in shape. Very That's true. true. Amy Cole. That's true. And you know what? I just thought about this. Out of all the positions during this during this uh, pandemic right now, pitchers were probably the only ones who could have got truly gotten ready to go. Because think about it, hitters need live hitting. They need live hitting against Major League Baseball players, Major League pitching. And fielders, you, there, you can take as many grounders as you want, but there's nothing like taking a live ground ball. But pitchers, if they could have worked through this whole thing, you got to imagine that most of them are, are 100% going to be ready to go, which I think is the most important for the Yankees right now. Yeah, I, I so completely agree anything- with that. Do you saying, have anything Christian? else from Brian Cashman? I don't. I have something from your boy, though. All right, so we do have to get to. Um, I want. I was hoping that you were able. You were going to be able to find this uh, clip because it was, you know, baseball's coming back. So you know what that means. We got to trash John Carl Stanton. Oh, he um, trashed him in it. No, no, Brian Cashman didn't trash John Carl Stanton. The fans trash John Carl Stanton. Right. Uh, because apparently Cashman led on that uh, not to expect um, Stanton in the outfield for maybe for the beginning of the season, maybe for most of the season, that maybe the calf uh, isn't up to snuff at right now. So my question is, if the season had started on time we were led to believe that this was maybe a week or two thing maybe be just out the first couple series of the season and now we're hearing mid you know we're coming back late july and he's not ready to play yet so if he had been in camp is he delayed because he wasn't in camp man that frustrates me how is this guy not 100 percent? how it's been a full year he had off how are you not 100 percent and how does this shit happen my, when you come to New York? I'm asking you, is he delayed because he wasn't in camp? Had he been in camp working out through all this, would he be ready to go? No. That's, that's some, what do you mean, no? No. If you're, if you're dealing with an injury, if you're rehabbing from an injury, you can still be running and, and, and going to the doctor. Everyone's been going to their doctor. I went to my uh, physical therapist for, for something for my back. I mean, why couldn't he be with his doctors working on the calf and doing sprints and running and making sure he was 100%? But can you, who's hitting him fly balls? I don't know. Someone. Uh, there's plenty of people who could have been hitting him fly balls. I mean, come on now. I don't think so. Quarantine. If Cashman came out and said, 
we're not 100% with Stanton because we haven't seen him take enough fly balls with that calf injury, whatever. That's one thing. But it sounds like he said that the calf is still like bothering him. You don't have the audio. It sounds like he said the calf is still bothering him from what you just told me. And that's a well, problem. That's why, I was, that's why I was paraphrasing it because... Uh, I mean, that's a problem for me. I'll, I'll start to, I'll back off the people who want to boom if, if that's the case. Because that's, I know it's not that's his fault. You're gar- it's because you're a garbage individual. Like I know it's not his fault, him. but this is just getting out of hand now. I mean, not only were you injured the entire season last year, but then you had such a delay that you're only playing 60 games and you're still not 100%. I mean, he's still a young dude. What's going on? There's got to be something going on with him that he can't be recovered at this point. And that's frustrating. Do you see this tweet that I just found while I'm searching Stan? Uh, Justin Verlander, Max Schmidt, Max Schmidt, <laughs> Max Scherzer, uh, Corey Kluber, Paul Goldschmidt, and John Carl Stan, among others, uh, played in underground Sandlot games during quarantine. There you go. See? So you were worrying about who's playing hitting fly balls. He's playing in uh, Sandlot leagues. But he's not 100%. He probably retweaks something. All right, here we go. This is from Jack Curry. Cashman believes Stanton will be ready to start the season as a DH, but isn't sure yet about playing the outfield. He wants Stanton to report to camp so the Yankees can gauge his condition in terms of playing the outfield. All right. Okay. I mean, if they want to gauge how well he's tracking down fly balls, that's one thing. But if they're if that's their concern because he has mentioned to them that it doesn't feel 100%, then then I'm telling you he's going to be injured the rest of the year. So where does it say in that tweet that he said something to the Yankees? No, I'm saying if that's the case, then I then just be ready for him to, to be out the entire season. I hope he comes to your house and punches you in the face. I'd kick his ass. Well, I hope the Yankees gave yeah. him clearance for playing in those games. I'm sure if he played these... in those games and he got hurt, then that's liability to, to lose – your contract. I'm sure. It's an Aaron Boone that's situation. That's why I don't think he's actually hurt. I think the Yankees just want to see him. I can't believe he's that stupid that he would still be hurt and go play in a Sandlot game and then, uh, yeah. you know, aggravate that thing. But it, it'll it give us, well, at that point, re- refresh my memory here. If we don't have Hicks, is Hicks going to be ready to start the season? That's the word. Wow. So then you got Guardy out there at least. We'll see some guard. Talk that would have been that would have been the number one thing that d- disappointed me outside of not getting any baseball would be that we wouldn't give be able to give Guardy the proper goodbye. Well, he's he he's not technically a free agent. I think the Yankees control an option on him for next season. Really? I didn't know that. Um, what? I can fill an encyclopedia with what you don't know. I've been I've been out of it, man. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I bullied you today. That would have that would have upset me. Let's see, Guardy's. Uh, this is how stupid I am. I'm type. I'm on spot track. I'm typing in Guardy. <laughs> <laughs> you think when he goes to like the lawyer to do his will, and he's like, "Okay, Mister Gardner," and he's like, "Uh, who's that?" Uh, what? Guardy. I'm Guardy. <laughs> He makes it. He makes them put Guardy in quotation marks in between his first and last uh, name. I don't want a funeral either. I want a Guardy party. <laughs> <sighs> I'd be. I'm. I'd be shocked if they have an option yeah, on him for a, next year. I'll, I'll be shocked because they do. Wow. I don't know if they'll if they'll uh, use that option, especially not after a shortened season. And I kind of hope they don't. I want this to be it. I want to. I want to know that this is it. Yankees have a ten million dollar option for twenty twenty one with a two and a half million dollar buyout. Hmm. What are you doing? Texting people? No, I'm looking for some. I'm looking for something. Oh, Ryan said that he had. I was. Ryan got it already. Yeah, I pulled it up, dude. You pulled it out? No. Blue chew. The blue chew. Um, 
What were you going to say? What kind of free advertising is Blue Chew getting from us right now? I'm reaching out to them this week. I swear to God. Oh, you ha- you have to. And I think you should also, uh, I think we should just stay in that area and you should also reach out to Manscaped also. D- should we just go all for the balls? We'll go Manscaped. We'll go Blue Chew. Trojan. Or Lifestyle. No. No, no. no you don't want to go that far. No, we, we don't have to go that far. Okay. Make it work. Make it look nice. But don't put anything on it. Gotcha. I got. I like that. I like. Why right, do you have any? Do you have any uh, objections to that? No, dude. Let's let's get it going. This is really his thing. He's yeah. got to run with it. I'm down. Hundred percent. You're gonna you're gonna take a blue chew and <laughs> yeah. Ryan's gonna be the new face of blue chew. I'm gonna take a blue chew and watch Tyler Wade. I, I might even put it at like point two five. And speed. then he's gonna have Cialis reaching out to him, doing slow mo. You're going to have to sign a uh, non-compete, or what is it? Non-disclosure? No, no. Oh, non-compete. non-compete. Yeah, you can't take, like, like Cialis, Viagra, and Blue Chew are going to bid for your yeah, service. Right, bidding war going then. Wow. Do what you got to do, bro. Make that money. Um, that's what the plan is here. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> you know who's not going to be making any money this year is uh, Domingo Armand, because I know you guys wanted to bring that up. I did. Uh, he, he suspended, so you won't see him this year. And you won't see him for five games next year. Or what, 63 games he had to serve? They might just give it to him. But I think he would have to miss I think the it was first 80, week. I think it was like 80, to, but they counted the games that he was on the uh, exemption list uh-huh. in 2019 or 2018. Was it 2019? When did he do I think it? he was, was due to no, come back June year, 5th 20. this year or somewhere around there. Here's my take on this, okay? I don't. I just want to take away what he did because I, I do not condone that. I think he should be suspended, but let's just, let's just leave it at suspension. Let's just leave it at that. I feel that anyone suspended due to these circumstances, it should not pick up from the first game. I really don't, I don't believe that. I think if his suspension was 60 games, right? He had to serve 60 games of the 162-game season. Um, That is 37% of the season. I think he should have to serve 37% of the 60 games. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. No, that's just my take on it. And it's an awful take. It's really not. sorry. So he would have to serve 22 games. No, I don't agree with letting prisoners out of early because of COVID. We shouldn't let these guys out of suspensions early because of COVID either. I get I, your time. Yeah. I, Look, I, I, uh, and what a weapon this guy would have been for the Yankees. He could start. He could come out and dominate yeah. out of the bullpen. But you know what? Don't be a scumbag. And you don't have to worry about these things. Hey, so. I'm with you on that 100%. I, again, I'm not. That's why I said I'm taking that off the table right now. I'm talking about any type of suspension that I don't know. I, I just feel like in given the circumstances and, uh, you know, the 60 game season at this point, teams not and given the circumstances that he got popped for hitting a woman. So deal with it. Deal with the consequences. Of course, you go back you to that when I'm trying to take should, that no. away for a second. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, but he got punished for doing something, right? So why are we going to prorate it now? Because something happened. Because it would have been served already. There, This is the last 60 games of the season. That's how this plays out. This isn't a 162-game season we're talking about anymore. I think he did. I think he's done his time at this point. And I don't I th- think so. Well, he, he should have to sit there and watch his team play knowing that he fucked up. And he, has, him he in particular, if I could single out him, yes, I 100% agree with you. If it were up to me, I wouldn't even have him back on my team, to be honest. If this was something that was proven that he actually did, um, and I knew of that, I would not have him on my team any for any longer. All right, so then trade your closer too. That is a completely different story. He was a uh, he was a maniac for what he did, and it's not something that you should condone either. But he did not put his hands on his girlfriend. He he lost his temper, and. And he paid his 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 and he was penalty for it as well. Yeah, but that's a little different to me. That's 
that's different. That you go, you know, you take some time, you talk to a therapist or something, and you figure out why the hell you went so crazy. And same thing for Herman, but you actually took it to a point where you hit a woman, and that's just inexcusable to me. Well, he was accused of choking her, so yeah. So again, you're right. He is a scumbag. And, and no, he'll be tough about, to. I'm talking about a role as child. Oh, oh, accused, accused but, but I don't think that ever came out that that and was he true. Only, and he only apologized for shooting the gun. Oh. What do you mean it never came out? I'm reading a story from 2015. Well, oh. then he's a scumbag too. I mean, Chapman fired eight gunshots in his garage uh, and was accused of choking his girlfriend during the October 30th incidents, according to a police report obtained by Yahoo Sports. Oh. So he is Chapman's a girlfriend too. told the police that the incident started when she questioned him about something on his cell phone. He admitted to police that he fired the gun but denied choking her. He's a maniac. Okay. The police said that the report uh, they did not make any arrests because of the inconsistencies in in the story and lack of physical evidence. So, mm. so innocent until proven guilty. There's still, I'm sure something happened. Oh, definitely. That shouldn't, that shouldn't have happened. Absolutely. So, I'm just saying, if you're going to get rid of Domingo Herman, you should probably cut ties with uh, Aroles Chapman as well. If you really want to play on that moral high ground there, which I'm, we know the Yankees I'm don't really want to build, tonight. which we've talked about before, because it really all comes down to winning. That's why if we played 162 after uh, on game 61 or whatever, how many games are you supposed to serve this year, Ryan? Like 63? 63, yes. Yeah, and in game 64, his ass would have been out. Probably would have been down Scranton getting ready. And then, oh, yeah. uh, when he was, and then when he was ready, he was going to be in, sitting his ass in that bullpen because he could help the team win. And it's not just goes for the Yankees. Every freaking team does this shit. They don't sure. care. And, and, he, and he really he, he deserves the consequences for his actions because if you go back to last year when this all happened, him not being there for the postseason last year, that was a huge loss for this team. So you know what? Good riddance, Domingo Herman. Miss this season and pay for what you did. And, you know, it, it's it, it's when, when someone suspended 80 plus games, I don't think it would be right. The right move to to prorate in any way. OK, I agree with that. I just when it's when it's that drastic of a number, they they deserve to miss no matter what, what even if something like this. Happens. The Yankees, you know, who should be re- I'm taking away is actually the actual woman that he abused. You know who should really be mad at Domingo Herman? His mother? No. Well, yeah, she should be mad as well. But Adam Adovino, because if Herman was around last year, Boone wouldn't have had a Scott Proctor, uh, yeah. Adam Adovino. Absolutely. You know, we didn't go into this enough, and I think it's because people just forgot about Herman because of how disgusted they were with him. But we didn't. I feel like we didn't talk enough about how much different last year's playoffs would have been for the Yankees if they had him. I mean, the guy won 18 games last year, right? I mean, he he's a weapon. We know he's a weapon out of the bullpen. He proved himself as a starter. He went eighteen and th- eighteen and four last year with a he had a four point oh three ERA, but that, that and was on. highly inflated. That yes. was actually from especially, one really bad especially especially if the Yankees ended up winning Game Six, like Christian said a few weeks ago. They didn't even have anyone to pitch a Game Seven, yeah, and then right. then you really would have been. Mm-hmm. Oh. but. We don't have him. We don't need him this year because I think the Yankees have the best starting rotation in baseball. So I know you have a clip of somebody, which we'll we'll get to in one second because uh, I know something else you wanted to bring up is who would be a surprise team to make the postseason in such a short season like this. And I was thinking about it after you asked this question earlier, and my team – in keeping it centered on the AL East is the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm. Yeah, I think uh I think the Blue Jays are actually going to give the Yankees more trouble than the Rays this year. And and yeah, we were saying that know. too. I don't know if I would go that far, but I think that a team like Toronto would not be able to hang through 162 because of the youth and lack of depth that they have. Yeah. They would fade towards the end, but if they're a, you know, they come out hot good enough where they could they could win you know like 35 go 35 and 25 or 40 and 20 or something like that they can actually absolutely go on a 60 game stretch like that 
And I don't know if their pitching is good enough to hold up through an entire season, but for 60 games, right. I think they would be able to. And Ryan made a good point. You know who's going to you know who's going to suffer the most? The Oakland A's given past years. That team doesn't normally pick it up until after the All-Star break. And and when they do, they're red hot. But the last couple of years that they've made the playoffs, they were nothing up until the All-Star break, and then they turned into one of the best teams in baseball. You know, and we didn't bring this up on the show last week because I actually it was on the tip of my tongue, and then we were talking about something else. Uh, there actually, there's going to be a trade deadline this year, and it's going to be uh, August 30th. August 30th or 31st? What did they say? I think August 30th. I saw that. No, I think it's. I think it is August 31st. I don't know. Do you? I don't know if they should have a trade a tr- trade deadline this year. I guess. Well, I guess, I guess you still have, have to. Yeah, it's August 31st. I guess you still have to, but it's just something I wasn't even thinking about. I mean, how are trades going to go with this whole COVID thing too? That's what I was going to say. Imagine getting traded during a pandemic. Like, how do you like? How do you say that to somebody? Seriously. Like, yeah, like your your family's quarantining in New York, but uh, we just traded you to San Diego. Like, yeah. go deal with that. And there's a lot of states right now over the last couple of weeks who have put in travel restrictions where if you're coming out of state you automatically have to quarantine yourself for 14 days outside of florida if you look at it every state that what i don't understand why has there been fireworks in my every every, every night. night for like two friggin' weeks every night like what are here. people i don't get it what are people doing are we that bored i guess but yeah every what were we saying every state has some type of regression yeah uh, every state except for Florida uh, is on a uh, that you that they would travel in to play the Yankees is exempt from the quarantine. So mm-hmm. we're, we're going to keep that one going. So my so, team, your team is uh, the Blue Jays. Yeah, I like the Blue Jays. But what's, this, what's like the question them. here? What are we answering? Who will why benefit is, the most? So Who will benefit sexy, the Ryan? most? That's the question we're thank, asking. Why are you so sexy? Oh, everyone on YouTube like, gets to see your hair. hair. Yeah, uh, comment like, look, comment on my hair. Like, it's very long. I want to know what what you people think. Blue Tree requested that. How did that you he... guys come? From the, how did you guys come from the same womb? Right, like, look at it. Brian and look at Chris. He looks like Fabio. Yeah, I don't know, man. I ask myself that a lot, but I don't. I don't. It's all right. Wow, I saw that look on his face. Yeah, soup, soup. yeah. <laughs> just always has to become oh. an insult to me. Can't just be a compliment to Ryan. That's true. That is kind of true, Christian. And I don't like what? that because I want the I want the full compliment. I don't need a backhanded diss. That's true. He, you I only want... you only compliment him to diss me. Yeah, really. Are you using me? Is that it? Yeah, I, I use you like you use Blue Chew. <laughs> All right, Chris. Who's your team? <laughs> My that's team is most? going to I think shock everyone here, but I'm going to go with the New York Mets. I think that if you're talking about a team that didn't have a good chance to their chances being much higher than they would be to, for a shortened season. I think the Mets will benefit the most in in a 60 game season with the rotation that they have if Noah Syndergaard can stay healthy. Uh he has Tommy John oh, surgery so yeah, good luck with that. Year. Oh, he's out for the whole yeah. I lost my time honestly I lost my timeline because yeah, of this is, whole delay. It is, it is very discombobulated. But they still have DeGrom. Um, but I I completely disagree with you Why? on the Mets being a surprise team because it's not they wouldn't have been a surprise to me. I think they're good enough that they even when through 162. See, that's why we're they answering different playoff, questions here. They could have been a playoff team. Okay, and that's fair, but But he's saying which team is the surprise team and we're saying which team benefits the most. Okay. That's a different question. I thought you said surprise. That's why I, I would think the a team like the Jays would be a surprise. I would not be I would not expect them to be in a playoff hunt uh through 162 the Mets I would absolutely expect to be in a playoff hunt through 162 so then my surprise might be the same as that guy rise here I would have to say the the Angels the Angels yeah that's what I would say too with that offense in 60 games I I think that they'll be able to win enough and they're I would you say the Wests are the weakest well you you have the Astros on paper which facing one another because it is the whole season is 40 against your own division and then 20 against your the opposite of your uh location so the angels could be that team but i don't know if they have the pitching for it but my what i w- w- uh, wanted to answer more was who is their number one it's not otani's not their number one i think it's he? actually andrew heaney yeah is, heaney. There, is there heaney is their number one 
But if we're if we're I I was thinking more of which team benefits the most from everything that's going on, and I wanted to say the Rays, but the more I thought about it, it's the New York Yankees. But not not a doubt in my mind because why? What what is the main uh, piece for the offense for the Yankees? What what is the main thing if they're doing this, they're winning ball games. If Aaron judges, if they're hitting dings, right? If they're yeah. if they're and and. They usually don't hit those home runs in the earlier months because it's Warmer the cold months, weather. Yeah. But now we're starting the game one is right in this the the middle of summer, mm-hmm. and this team's going to be able to use that power. Christian, you brought up the point. Garrett Cole's throwing hard. Pitchers tend to throw harder when the weather gets a little sure. bit warmer. So we have a bunch of flamethrowers in this in this rotation in this bullpen. A bunch of depth too that the Yankees desperately need. And with the sixty game schedule. That, that that depth is going to go such a long way. But and, this warm weather is, well, I think is the they biggest piece. Fit also, go ahead for Ryan. the delay. I think they also benefit because had we started in March, they don't no be Aaron hurt. Judge, no right. Aaron Hicks, exactly. no John Carlos Stanton, no James Paxton. Now all these guys are are you know knock on wood ready to go, so we don't have to miss any time with uh, those. Those are four big pieces out of your lineup there. Sure, and Luke Voigt. Luke Voigt is trash. He's trash. He's awful. I saw him taking some hacks off with of Garrett Cole. I'd rather I'd rather have Timmy Lupus from the Bad News Bears playing first base. That's how bad Luke Voigt is. Think of how great this is for the Yankees offense that they get to they get to practice against Garrett Cole. They haven't had a guy like that that they've been able to improve from. Sure. I mean CC kind of, but not to that not to that top dog Chris, how does level. it make you feel that timmy lupus is a better baseball player than luke Voigt? he's not and i'll tell you and i'll say this we're so hung up on the fact that this delay helped the yankees because of all the injuries because that's all we've had to talk about over the last year uh negative about this team but you're right you don't even think about it from that angle this team sucks in the cold in the beginning of the year and they start to turn it on once once the warmer months come around we're starting in the warmer months we're playing most of the season in warmer months. So this team should really dominate. They should start out hot for sure. I'm actually going to, while you guys talk about whatever, I'm going to pull up what their record was from July 23rd okay. through 60 games from there last, last season. Because I bet you they were phenomenal. But yeah, and then you think about teams that get hurt by this. Like Chris said, we were talking about it earlier. Oakland is that team over the last few years that has started very slow and then they turn it on and sometimes it's too late and they they aren't going to be able to afford that this year. So teams like that, the, those slow starters, those are the ones that might the, get hurt. The Yankees are slow starters, but I again, we talked about my tweet where by 60 games they're mm-hmm. usually in first or second place. The the A's slow start is very slow. Yeah. So I mean, 60 games, give or take, is Memorial Day, right? And that's usually your first mile marker in a major league season. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, and, how you know, you never really look – how often are you looking at Memorial Day where the Yankees are like sub-500 or uh, you're really like truly worried about them? You're not. Yeah, I think it was just that one year Chris mentioned. What was that, 2010 maybe? They were 31 and thir- – 30 Yeah, they were in like fourth their- place. But, but they still made the playoffs that year. Yeah. No, they- I thought you said it was 2016. I'll pull it up. I don't know. Just you just you just all over the place. Today. I didn't say 2016. I never said that. I am interested. You said the one year that they were in fourth place, it was 2016. No, I, I, that was no the he said that. I didn't know. Yeah, it was 2016. Yeah, they were no, they were 500. They were 30 and 30 and 30. But other than that, they were f- over the last three years in first place. And then in 15, first place. 14 and 13, they were in second place. 2012, first place. 2011 and 2010, they were in second place. Yeah. Girardi deserves a medal for having that team at any point be in second place yeah. in 2013. Yeah. Was that the Vernon Wells years? Travis Hafner? These young kids today, they don't know. They don't know. Have you, have, have been... Uh, Lance Nix be your cleanup back. Mm. Oh my or Jason God, Nix. Jason Those Nicks, were yeah. the days. And uh, followed by, what was that? Lyle Overborf. Oh, yeah. He Lyle Overborf. He was good. Chase Headley. Was he an albino? Lyle Overbay? Yeah. yeah. I just think he was blonde. I think and he pale. was. Did, I think didn't he, he play in Seattle? 
Yeah. Yes. And Pittsburgh. Yeah. I think. And I then he went. And in, then he went to Boston. I remember him in Milwaukee. He's a scrub. Anyway, you want to get to the Jeter, uh, the Jeter audio? Yeah, I mean, you know, while we're talking about uh, surprises and teams that are going to benefit from uh, being in uh, being in a short season, I don't think it matters for the uh, for the Miami Marlins at all. So, I don't think it's going to matter for them for a long time. Let's hear from the actually uh, Lyle Overbay never played in Seattle. He was at Arizona, Milwaukee, Toronto, Pittsburgh, Arizona, Atlanta, Yankees, back to Milwaukee. Uh, his career war, anybody want to guess? Negative seven. 19. Uh, Ryan's closer. Ryan, Ryan actually gave him a little bit of respect for having a 14-year <laughs> career. Uh, it was 16.3. Oh, wow. I gave him I went over. Not bad. All right. So this is Jeter. He, he did a little uh, interview talking about the Marlins being ready for the 2020 season. We have 60 games, so it's it's like we played 102 and, and we're tied for first place. And there's a lot of excitement. Our players are going to be ready, and we hope that our fans are ready to support. Our players. Now, I wanted to I wanted this on the show here because it's still fucking bizarre that Derek Jeter is referring to our fans and our team, and he's not talking about <laughs> the New York Yankees. Crazy. It, it was very weird because you're the one who mentioned it to me. I hadn't heard it. And then I found the audio clip and listened to it, and it felt weird to hear it. Because when Jeter was ever interviewed when he was a player, he would talk the same way. You know, he would talk like he was the leader. He would talk like he was in charge because he was. It would always be our players, our guys. And players. Players. And he literally looks the same as he did when he retired. And so he's sitting there doing this interview, and it's and it feels like he's talking about the Yankees, and he's not. Mm. Well, I, I just looked over because I wanted to see the lot when uh, Derek Jeter Day was, and it was back in May of 2017. So we're that was basically Jeter's last appearance as, quote, a Yankee. So it's been three years, but it's just still so weird. It really I is. Mean, I mean, I'm I'm mad at Hal. I really am. I'm mad at Hal. What did Jeter buy into that team for? Five million bucks? You couldn't let Derek Jeter buy into the Yankees and and let him be Brian Cashman's uh, or give Brian Cashman a higher title and like Derek Jeter run the team or something? Come on. Listen, I think Derek Come Jeter. On, Hal. Derek Jeter was so good at what he did off the field that there was much I know that book talks about it a little bit but I think it goes even further than that with the bad blood between him and the Yankee organization I really do that's on Hal I really do Hal I believe that that's a bad job Hal couldn't give him a cut of the team let him think that he was doing you know you know you your kids are old enough now I don't know if you do this with them right but when you were playing video games and you were playing a one-player game and there was a little kid around and they wanted to play, you gave them the other controller even though it didn't do didn't anything. Didn't do anything, yeah, and they thought they were playing. Yeah. And they thought they were playing. You could, How could have given Derek Jeter the spare controller and let him think that he was running shit just to keep him around? I mean, come on now. We, like, like if I died tomorrow, I would die with Derek Jeter as a Miami fucking Marlin. How am I gonna go? How am I gonna take that into the afterlife? And I don't think you'll really have it any other way at that point. I really don't. Like I, I don't think he'll ever be associated with the Yankees in a professional sense for for the rest of his life. You know, it was like uh, I'll equate it to maybe it was like um, I don't know. It was weird when like Hulk Hogan left to go to WCW and you're just waiting for him to come back to retire with the company that made him. And you're just waiting. Like, yeah, go do your thing, but come back here when you're done. Like, he has to come back at some point. He, before he dies, he's got to be a Yankee again. You never know. Sell that piece of shit team and come <laughs> back. Um, so Like, like no one's going to think anything less of Derek Jeter if he just gives up and says, fuck this. The, I, I suck at this. Uh, Miami sucks. They'll always suck. Even I'm with done. the new I'm stadium, they New- suck. 
you know, I, I, I traded Stan for a bag of balls. I traded Chris and Yelich for a bag of balls. I took that. The, my my greatest contribution in Miami is taking that statue out of the stadium. Was he responsible for Yelich? The Yelich trade? Yes. He was there by then? Absolutely. He traded Stan, and Yelich went after Stan. So, so anyway, I just did uh, the Yankees record last year from uh, July 23rd on. And they were 38 and 22 which is a 633 winning percentage so Brian and I said you need 40 to guarantee yourself a spot in the postseason in this sense yeah and you know what it's going to be much different because you're going to have guys when this season starts like I said every game matters more than ever before you're not going to have the same you know guys sitting out every other day you're going to unless it's truly warranted, you're going to be going full force. This is the last two months of the season, which again are the, are the most exciting two months of any baseball season. So it's going to be all or nothing. And I think this you know, team, Ryan, the way they're built is just going to dominate. And Ryan and I discussed this. It's going to be very interesting to see how the managers handle this going forward. I mean, are they going to manage with that type of urgency? Like these are all postseason games. You know, like we said, I don't. I despise the term "punt," like, but people said Aaron Boone punted games in 2018. You cannot afford. Can you afford to let one go? Like, if the Yankees are losing by two runs late, and you know you used you, all your big guys two or three days in a row, can you afford to let that one go, no. or do you have to push Zach Britton? Can you? Do you have to push a role as Chapman? Mm-hmm. You have to do things like that. Yeah, because gonna, wouldn't you, know? you do? Would you do that in August if you're if you're right in the middle of things and you're trailing by two? You got to win that game in August, and that's the equivalent of the start of the season, the final two months. Yes, maybe you're right. You know, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. It'll be. But fun there's to watch, also going to be a lot of you know. You might not. You might pull off a little bit because also there would be wear on the guys from having pitched uh, four months previous. So you don't want to completely burn them out but maybe because they haven't pitched maybe would you you know i think boone did boone ever let anybody go three days in a row last year if he did it was I think very he did rare one, he did it one time i was it tommy canely he he had go three yeah three times that's because it was like towards the very gave, end of the career uh, he left the, he left a case of red bulls in tommy's locker and said i need you to go three days in a row i need you to go a third night tommy here's he, red bull you have to think of it this way too every team in the a because you have a team like the orioles right Every team in the AL East has more of an advantage now because I know they play those teams the same in a 162 game season, but there's also a big chunk of games where they're playing tougher teams where some of those, some of those teams are going to get beat. They're not as good. Every team in the AL East right now is better than the Orioles, right? They should dominate. There's not these other games anymore where those teams that are better than the Orioles are still not as good as the other teams they're playing. So that percentage of games you're playing against a shit team like the Orioles mm-hmm. makes a much bigger impact. Much, teams are How many times are they playing each other in the division? Ten. Ten times. So, so look, those are that's a bigger percentage of wins now for those teams playing shit, they, shit teams. They would and, usually play... Uh, Every team in your division, I, I think eighteen times. Eighteen, yeah. So that would be eighteen or nineteen, depending that, on how. Yeah. That would you know, only the schedule yeah. is unbalanced. It would be know? around eleven percent of your schedule this season. Seventeen percent of your schedule will be against that specific team in your division. So, Christian, your point with the Blue Jays, if there is a team that does shock us, it kind of has to be the Blue Jays because they're going to have that schedule uh, that's going to be favorable for them when they're playing seventeen percent of their games against the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, and they're not going and playing. And and another, and then and then they'll play the the Marlins a few times. So. And I know we brought this up at another, at a, some other point, and whether or not they're going to play in Rogers Center, they are going to summer camp in Rogers Center, but no ruling has been made on whether or not they'll actually play the games in Canada. Well, they don't want to play. They don't want to play in that stadium even when it's a regular season. <laughs> I don't Canada, blame them. Canada. It's the worst stadium I've ever been to in my life. People say it's hot. It's like it's hot. Like hot, like, like yo, that shit was hot, or like it's yeah, too no, hot. I'm sweating. No, it's it's hot. It's hot. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you something. Whoever says that is on fucking LSD, because that is the worst stadium you will ever step foot into. 
ever. Yeah, they got federal. I'm, I'm super excited that we only have to watch ten games combined in in Rogers Center and yeah. Tropicana Field this year. The ten is too many. For Tropicana. Federal government approval for Rogers Center training camp. So that's, but still, I guess still no word on the actual season. And how many oh, games? Gov- did the they government allow that? Yeah, they had to. I guess they have to. If yeah. there's, uh, That's the same with travel Cuomo band. was the gov- uh, making the decision. For- and no schedules have officially been put out. I don't think so. So we no. don't know how many times oh. they're going to be playing teams in a series. I mean, I have to imagine there's a lot of two-game series this year. Well, that's what I'm. I'm not sure of if if it will be. Maybe a sh- they would do five. Maybe they would just do a straight five shot. I was listening to Chris Carlin. Um, Kind of why ins- would you why would you subject I, I, yourself to that? I had him on the radio and I just didn't turn it off because I was interested in what he was saying. Um, he insinuated that teams would um, would either would maybe play a few times a four game series, then maybe it would be a six game series, uh, six games against the uh, opposite division, and then sometimes two games. So he was complaining that the Mets are going to get screwed over because they're going to have to play he- the Yankees six times. While the Braves will only have to play the Orioles, uh, the Yankees twice, something like that. Because he's an he's a he's an idiot because he's you're playing man. the opposite division five times. All right, five so yes, yeah, yeah, he didn't have uh, that no, right. Four info. times, I'm sorry. Four times five is twenty. That's how you get the remaining schedule. Right, but he was saying that some some of it might be six six games against a specific team and then two games against a specific okay, I'm team. I'm sorry. I'm just a jerk off uh, doing a, a podcast in my man cave. He's got sources. He knows. Right. But no one else yeah, has they, heard this. They haven't said anything, right? No. The, from what I understand is that uh, it's going to be you're going to play everybody equally. You're going to play 10 be. against your team in your division and you're going to play four against the other teams in the opposite division. Why would yeah. you Why would you do it any other way? It yeah. makes it easy for everybody. Yeah. So he was just being dramatic to try and get people to listen. He's a scumbag and a loser. Yeah. He's a I, loser. Agree, agree. Agree. You know, you know, it's funny that you said that um you just had him on in the car and you didn't bother to change it. Today I was in the car and I couldn't get my podcast to come. I was listening to a podcast. I couldn't get it to come on. So I was only going like five minutes from where I was. I was like, screw this. I'll just listen to Moose and Maggie. And I was like, no, I can't do this. I can't do this Bad myself. Decision. Yeah, I because only listened for a few minutes. What they Maybe it wasn't today. It might have been yesterday. But what they were talking about was whether or not Garrett Cole would be as successful as CeCe Sabathia because – He's not as likable. What? Yeah, he'll be likable when he's throwing 98 on opening day. I don't day. care. I don't care what – as long as Garrett Cole isn't breaking laws, I don't care what type of surly personality he might have. As long as – he's not being paid to hand out candy canes and, uh, you know, pet puppies. You hey, know? He's hey, not- hey, Maggie, uh, did you watch his fucking press conference when he was introduced to this team? Did you watch that? Because in an instant, he became one of my favorite Yankees ever, and he hasn't even stepped on a baseball field for them yet. Like I could, like the context of what they were saying is like CC was really successful here, and he was because he was such an outgoing, likable guy. And what you know, Garrett Cole. First of all, how do you know Garrett Cole? Did you did you go out with him? Did you guys date Maybe for a she while? Did. And plus, I I feel uh, like that's wrong because I think CC was so likable here because he was such a great leader. And we've already seen before the spring training got shut down how much Garrett Cole was already showing that he's a leader. By who, who was he talking? He was he was giving a, a bunch of guys advice. He had a little roundtable discussion going on during camp. So he's, oh, a, he's a because uh, because a part of it was because of the way he acted after Houston lost the World yeah, Series yeah. last year. And he said, I'm, oh, I'm not an Astro anymore. And he put on this Scott Boris hat. Oh, oh, you know what? My my man knew he wanted out and he got the he got out. We'll worry about and that he came in 10 to New years. York. I, I gave my theory on that. I think Garrett Cole got there and and became a lot more knowledgeable on what they were doing over the last year. And he wanted nothing to do with that team anymore. I really do. I think you can put it in in those terms, given how he acted after that game. Just the state of sports talk radio is horrendous right now. Yeah. So yeah, they're and they're the worst. And you know what? And I hope somebody watches that watches or listens to the show knows Mark Melusis so they can pass along this message to him. He looks like a fucking muppet. <laughs> <laughs> I fought with him on Twitter. He was like, "Oh, got- look at this guy." Loser. I've I've gotten into beefs with Chris Carlin before. Yeah, Carlin doesn't like you. 
Moose you know doesn't what? like me. Tag team match. Let's go. Me and you versus Carl and Moose. I'll, 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 that's the one time I'll fight by your side. Are we taking blue chews before the match? Why would we take a blue chew before fighting two other dudes? Exactly, dude. For the for the for the ad space for the for I'll the money. Blue, the clout. You know, remember back in the day, like during boxing matches, like the ring girls used to have Golden Palace written on their tummies. Yes. I'll I'll let you spray paint blue chew on my stomach. Deal. <laughs> Deal. Oh, God. Oh God. That's when you know it's time, then, to, time to end. There we go. So uh, baseball is back in some form or fashion. You know, uh, you know, you can go on Twitter, uh, see a little Garrett Cole action. Uh, you know, uh, there is there is some positive video of Aaron Judge hitting. You can't really see it because of where the camera was uh, situated, but he was hitting bombs and BP. So, you know, you can start to feel it now. Baseball is yeah. coming back and uh, – you know, like I said, I'm going to choose to remain optimistic that this season is going to go off and go off without a hitch. So fuck you, Buster Olney, and your pessimism. Um, I fuck you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So let's go. Let's. I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready for baseball. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, Ryan, Ryan's ready for his Blue True shipment. Yep. Let's get it going. I'm sending the email tomorrow. I, I'm, I'm, I, wanna, I want you to do that, seriously. And it's what should the subject be? Brian, we're Ur- urgent. <laughs> <laughs> urgent. We're going hard so, for Blue Chew. Uh, yeah, we play hard. The Guardy plays hard. We play hard. Uh, that, actually, the Guardy report can be should it be sponsored Gardy? by, Blue, by Chew. Blue Chew. All right, and he's going. I'm hard. I mean, I play hard. Oh my god, that's great. We got to do that. All right, so uh, we'll work on that uh, one. Uh, now uh, I don't just play this. hard. I am hard. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening to episode 182 of the NYYST podcast. Follow us on Twitter at NYY Sports Talk. Stat Guy Rye. Go Yanks. Chris, say goodbye. Peace. Peace.